saw the mouse, one of the smallest members of the forest, was having a pleasant breakfast, his door started to be knocked as if it would break. When the mouse excitedly opened the door, he saw a sad gazelle in front of him. Oh, mouse, you must help me. Something very bad has happened. What's wrong, gazelle? <laughs> the lion. The mouse began to tremble as soon as he heard the lion's name, because he was very afraid of him. Since I am the king of the whole jungle, this is my home too, he said and took my home away from me. And I am homeless now. Everyone I asked for help to get my house back got scared and ran away. Because he's a lion. We're all afraid of him. But you are not like others, Mouse Brother. You are braver and smarter. Please help me. After some thought, the little mouse agreed to help his friend. They set out together. The lion was indeed in a deep sleep in the gazelle's garden. The little mouse wanted to nudge the lion with his giant paw to wake him up. But when the lion moved, he immediately backed away in fear. This time, even though he tried to wake him up by shaking his mane, the lion was snoring so much that the mouse was covering his ears and stayed where he was because of fear. While the little mouse was looking around for a long, thin stick to wake the lion, his tail touched the lion's whisker. The snarling lion suddenly awoke. Uh, achoo! The lion, angry that he woke up from his pleasant sleep, came face to face with the mouse. He got up from where he was lying in anger. Why did you wake me up? Or did you bring me food? Huh? Tell me! Food? No, uh, no, sir. How dare you enter my garden? G gazelle well, um, sir... What happened? She fled to the mountain. Then you should run away too, because now I'm going to devour you! Roar! With the roar of the lion, the little mouse was dragged far away from him. The lion continued his sleep from where he left off. The next day, the mouse mustered up his courage and went back to the gazelle's garden. Rawr! Didn't I tell you to stay away from this garden? Yes, yes, you said, but uh. So? I uh, I was going to ask you if you've uh seen the house the hyena built for himself. What's wrong with his house? It's much bigger and more majestic than yours. And it has a huge garden full of trees and beautiful grasses all around. Oh, really? The lion wanted to see that house, which was more flamboyant than the gazelle's house. Come on, take me to the hyena's glorious house. Even though the mouse was trembling with fear, he accepted the lion's request. After a while, they finally arrived at the hyena's house. However, there was neither a magnificent big house nor a garden full of trees. The hyena's house was just a small and very ordinary hole. You liar mouse! Rah! I'll eat you up! Come here! Rah! Realizing that he was deceived, the lion ran towards the mouse. Oops! The lion was running over the logs while the mouse was running through the logs. Just as the lion was about to grab the mouse's tail, the little mouse quickly climbed the tree. Please, king of the jungle, it's not my fault! I just wanted to help Gazelle! The lion got even more angry and started shaking the tree with his giant paws. Hurry down, you little mouse! Rah! 
While the mouse was about to slip between the lion's paws on the swaying tree, a flock of hedgehogs got entangled in the lion's feet. <laughs> get off! Although the lion tried to get rid of the hedgehogs, their thorns kept stinging. Taking advantage of this, the mouse jumped from the tree into the middle of the hedgehog herd and escaped. Just when he thought he had eluded the lion, the mouse heard the thunderous footsteps and threw himself into the slime pool with a fury. However, because he was very light, he successfully landed on the ground again. As for the lion, his feet got stuck in the slime the moment he stepped into the slime pool to catch the little mouse. What's that? Don't move, sir, or you'll sink further! I'm not going to take advice from you! The mouse, who wanted to help the lion, took a piece of branch from the side and held it towards him. Sir, hold on to this branch! I'll pull you out and save you! I don't want to! I'll get out of here myself! However, if the lion saved one of his feet, the other foot went into the mud. And as he struggled, he became covered with mud. And he finally gave up. M mouse I'm sinking! Help! Save me! I want to go back home! Please, hurry up! The mouse collected the largest leaves from the gum tree next to them and laid them one by one on the slime. Hurry, lion! You can step on the leaves and get out! Since the gum leaves are sticky at the bottom, they were not buried in the mud. The lion managed to get to the ground by stepping on the leaves, albeit with difficulty. Oh, mouse! I would have never survived if you hadn't thought about these leaves. I'm sorry for underestimating you. Tell me, what do you want from me, the king of the jungle, the lion? The little mouse asked the lion to give the gazelle her home back. The lion immediately accepted this request. Because thanks to this tiny mouse that saved his life, he understood the value of having a home much better. And so the gazelle has returned to her home with a beautiful garden. The lion has fallen asleep in his den. And the little mouse has returned to his delightful breakfast. And everyone was talking about the great success story of this little member of the forest like epics. Once there lived a family not too far out from where we all lived. The Darling family. The Darling family had three children. Their names were Jan, Michael and Wendy. Wendy would always tell her mum how Peter Pan would always play the flute in her room. Her mother would always tell her that she was imagining things, but couldn't help but notice the leaves in the room, which always confused her a bit. Wendy would always say that the leaves fall off Peter Pan. One night, when their parents went out for the night, the kids were left home all alone, and when they got sleepy, they all went to sleep. Peter Pan silently entered their room and started looking for the leaves he had left behind. At that moment, Wendy woke up. Peter Pan, I was waiting for you. Nobody would believe that you're real. Wendy gave back the leaves she had been hiding for Peter. She really liked Peter, and so they sewed his leaves back on his clothing. Wendy, would you like me to tell you an amazing adventure story? I don't want to hear about an adventure. I want to live one, Peter Pan. Right at that moment, Peter's small fairy friend, Tinkerbell, entered through the window. Well, of course. I knew you'd be here. Are you getting ready for a new adventure without me? You know it's not possible for me to do anything without you. Wendy woke her siblings up. Her siblings looked at Peter Pan and Tinkerbell with great confusion. Well, are you ready to fly? 
Tinkerbell scattered her fairy dust and off they went floating into thin air. And all together they left the house. The kids headed towards Neverland at once. After a long journey, they arrived at Neverland, and there they were. The mermaids, wild animals, Indians, pirates, and the lost boys were there too. Amongst them all was the most dangerous of them called Captain Hook. Captain Hook was Peter Pan's enemy. The reason for this was because when they were fighting, Peter cut his arm and a huge crocodile ate it. Along with his arm, he also swallowed his watch and because of this, the crocodile would always make a tick-tock noise. And so Captain Hook would always know if the crocodile was near from the noise. When looking around with his binoculars on the deck, Captain Hook spotted Peter Pan and kids looking at him from the top of a hill. He immediately ordered the men to fire the cannons. It was very hard for Peter Pan and the kids to get away from the cannons. Tinkerbell, you take the kids to a safe place. I will deal with Hook. Tinkerbell was very jealous of Wendy, so she wanted to keep her away from Peter Pan. With some made-up excuse, she left Wendy back on the hill and brought Jan and Michael to a safe place down at the beach. The lost boys who lived on the island saw Wendy from afar, and thinking that she was an enemy, they wounded her. At the same time, Peter Pan was fighting with Captain Hawk. But seeing the crocodile that got his arm suddenly reappearing, Hook ran away in fear. Ah! Whilst Peter Pan was coming back, he saw Wendy lying on the rocks wounded, and he was very upset. And the lost boys were very sorry when they realised that the girl that they had wounded was Peter Pan's friend. I have left the kids in your care. Tinker Bell was so sorry. She also realised that what she did was wrong. I am so sorry, Peter. This will never happen again, I promise. Lost Boys made a beautiful home for Wendy and her brothers. At night, they all would sleep in the house underneath the trees, listening to Wendy's stories. And Peter Pan would keep guard in front of the house. One day, when they were resting on the rocks, they spotted the pirates approaching. The pirates took the Indian chief's daughter hostage. Peter Pan and the boys went after to save the chief's daughter. And there was a big battle between them and the pirates. In the end, they saved his daughter and brought her to the chief. After that day, the Indians, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys became very close friends. In fact, the chief ordered two of his best men in Peter Pan's command to guard the boys. Of course, Captain Hook was furious about this. One day I will beat you, Peter Pan, and you will not be able to get away. One night, when Wendy started to tell the story of her family, Peter realised how much she and her brothers missed their home. So he told them that they could go back if they wanted to, but that he wanted to stay. When they all were packing up for their long journey, they were attacked by the pirates. The pirates caught the boys after they set up a trap to the Indians and captured them. Peter Pan was sleeping at home, not knowing all that happened to the boys. Captain Hook saw him sleeping. But he could not open the door to Peter Pan's treehouse. 
Still, he poured the poison in the bottle he was carrying under the door, causing Peter Pan to sleep for hours. Peter Pan slept one whole day, and when he woke up, Tinkerbell entered. After she told him all that had happened, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell went out to rescue the boys. When they arrived to the Happy Rock, the pirates' headquarters, they saw that there was no pirate on guard. And when they went over to the other side of the rock, they were shocked from what they saw. Wendy, Jan and Michael and the last boys were all tied up to the poles and Captain Hawk was holding a torch in flames. Say your last words. <laughs> As their eldest, Wendy began to talk. Dear friends, my last words to you will be the words your real mothers would have told you. If they were here, they would have told you not to be afraid and be courageous to face your death. Don't be afraid. Kindness always wins. Always. Captain Hook got very angry with Wendy's words, so he brought her to the boat and tied her to the big pole. At this moment, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell reached out to save the boys. At the same time, the Indians and their chief came to help. This made Peter Pan so happy, because with their help, they rescued the boys. It was now time to get Wendy. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys got on Captain Hook's ship, where only a few pirates remained. And when they realised that they would be beaten, they jumped off the ship. There's nowhere to hide, Hook. Surrender! Peter Pan and the Lost Boys started to charge towards Captain Hook, pushing him to walk backwards. And suddenly, he heard the noise, the one noise that he was most afraid of. When Captain Hook looked back in fear, he saw the croc waiting for him to fall down into the water. Help! In a flash, he ran to the other side of the boat, jumped and started to swim as fast as he could. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys began to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> From that moment on, Hook's ship belonged to the Lost Boys and their captain was Peter Pan. The crew is ready for your orders, Captain Peter. Sail away! The boys untied the ropes and the sails blew up with all their might. Tinkerbell, fly us away to the home of the Darling family. The kids were very happy to hear this. Wendy, Jan and Michael were going to reunite with their parents they had dearly missed. When Tinkerbell sprinkled the fairy dust, suddenly the ship was airborne and started to fly in the sky. Wendy was restless to get home and tell her parents all about Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and the Neverland. From that day on, Neverland was going to be their second home and Peter Pan their best friend. <laughs>